And for folks who would like to learn some of the tips and tech, tri tech tips to have a more efficient and streamlined experience with eTest and TOPS Pro, um, if you are not a current CASAS eTest and TOPS Pro Enterprise user, this certainly will be helpful for you to participate. Um, but we will, we are not at the treetops level. So if you have questions um, about the eTest and TOPS Pro Enterprise application, we will be happy to answer your questions. There are plenty of help docs under training and support as well. Uh, today we're going to be reviewing some of the, uh, a quick review of the applications, um, discussing some of the tech tips, as well as addressing some of the commonly asked questions that we're receiving a lot um, in tech support, CASAS info, and in the training desk. So if you um, have any questions, just a little bit of housekeeping. Um, just if you need to dial in and you're having trouble with audio, you can dial in 929-436. 2866, or if you're in California, you can dial 669-900-6833. Uh, please, please make sure all your phones and computers are muted. Um, we shouldn't have any trouble with that because we can mute you from our side, but thank you for just double checking that for us. If you have any questions during this presentation, please make sure that you post them in the chat box. Also, make sure that you post it to everyone, not just to an individual. Um, that way, everyone can see the response. Our collective knowledge helps us grow and raises us all to a level of fidelity with implementation of CASAS assessment. Um, just to let everyone know, we will be and are recording the webinar and the PowerPoint that you see today. We will be reviewing most of the slides. There are some that we've included for you to make sure that you have access to the resources that you need. These, uh, the video webinar link and PowerPoint will be posted at causes.org under the What's New section on our landing page. And we will hopefully have a chance at the end of the training to show you that. So that's just a little bit of housekeeping. If you have questions, please post them in the chat box and one of our team members, um, Martha or Linda or Aileen will answer those questions for you. So I am Christine Main. I have joined the CASAS training team. I have been using CASAS uh, since 1992 in my own learning lab um, at a county uh, seat in the county seat uh, where I grew up in Indiana at Madison Grant Works. I um, am here to share with you today a brief overview of the GOALS test series. Um, we do have a new um, series that most of you are aware of. You'll see those in your e-test application. We'll have some miscellaneous tips and information. We will also um, talk about the fidelity of implementation of e-tests and TOPS Pro. There are some new test reports as well as some tried and true, got to have them, need to use them test reports, um, as well as some of the website resources that you can access. Um, we all like to find information for ourselves and read at our leisure. Um, so if you want to, um, if you want to post some of your favorite website resources that you found, you can during the webinar cut and paste those links into the chat box for everyone, that would be great. We love to have your input. Let's get started. We're gonna take about 15 minutes to walk through the PowerPoint and then at uh, about 15 minutes uh, in, at about 2.20, Martha Perez will take over at the helm and she will be demonstrating for you some of the some of the functionality that I will be sharing with you. First of all, the Reading Gold Series, as you know, was launched this summer. Um, with the Reading Gold Series, most of you have seen that, um, that the locator, the appraisal forms, as well as forms A, B, C, and D. You see those in your e-test application. We won't take a lot of time to go over the timing of these uh, assessments, but do want you to know that these resources are available to you. For the math goal series, uh, you'll see our test forms here with the appraisal form. 
You've asked some questions about will there be uh, an expansion of this series. And um, I will let Linda Taylor, who is online with us, post um, the progress of that in the chat box. Um, the Math Goals series, of course, um, has multiple test forms. Uh, you'll see the list of test items here uh, with the timing in the right-hand column. It's important to note that both the Reading and Math Goals series are aligned to CCR standards um, and the cost is competencies. And you can locate that information um, on the website, of course. Just a nice fact, many of you have been asking about the math goals locator versus appraisal. Which locator or appraisal placement test should agencies use with math goals? So agencies that use the cost e-test may use Form 104N math for the goals locator. The Form 900M math goals appraisal is the only appraisal that is appropriate for use with paper-based pre- and post-tests in the math goal series. That's very important to note that in e-test, that is an automatic function. Once you assign that test session, and Martha will be showing you um, that. I've also included a link here for you so that you can download the FAC uh, document on math goals. There's an extensive FAC document on our website. This is the math blueprint. This is a new version that's located on our website. Many of you have seen this, but if you haven't, you definitely want to hop on our costus.org website. At the end of this uh, webinar, if we have time, we will show you where you can find that, but all you need to do is go to costus.org and click um, on the costus assessment and locate math goals, and this blueprint is located there. Um, of course, many of you have seen in our e-test the new cal or the, the function, the calculator function. Um, we have lots of questions about calculators. Uh, again, we have a fact that we've provided about calculators. Um, in a nutshell, when you use a calculator online, you can click on the icon and it will open the calculator. If your customers or your participants, your students are more comfortable with using the calculators that you use in the instructional setting. We do also have a list of the approved calculators. No graphing calculators are allowed, uh, but basic function calculators are allowed and we provide a list of those um, on our website. Um, also with the cost of score ranges for ABE, ASE, these charts are located if you have questions about the EFL, those educational functional levels, and their correlation to the CASAS levels, and the reading goals scale scores. Uh, those resources are also available to you. And for the uh, CASAS scores and the grade level equivalencies, we also have charts located on the website. And again, we when we send this PowerPoint to you, we'll include those uh, hyperlinks for you so you can find those immediately. Same goes for the grade level equivalent for math. And I see that we may have a question in the chat box. Uh, thank you, Linda, for answering those questions. And Berenice, thank you also for um, posting the link to where those math goals assessments uh, or resources are. We are excited to announce, for those of you who use both e-tests and paper tests, um, we are excited to announce that we have the self-scoring answer sheets available to you. No need to have those overlays that we used to have where we circled and, and used um, a significant amount of staff time. Now we have self-scoring answer sheets for the goals, math, and reading and math appraisal forms 900R and 900M. Also, we have, um, for programs who are doing both paper testing and scanning, because we recognize some of you who are e-testing also have settings where you might be using paper tests, the new TRUS-19 answer sheets are available to order. They are still brown, and the old ones cannot easily be used after December 2019. So you will want to make sure that you have transitioned to the new TRUS-19 answer sheets that are still a uh, couple of miscellaneous tips for you, math goals. Um, 
for math goals, um, we've reviewed the physical calculator. They can use both the on-screen and physical calculator. We get this question a lot. Um, E-test automatically ends the test when the time is up and the test taker finishes and is allowed to finish that item that they're working on. So that's important to note that um, your test takers will see that their time is up, but the test format does allow them to finish the item that they're working on. Um, we also recommend to have at least one touch screen device um, for folks who are not as tech savvy with a computer. Um, these most uh, um, research shows that our touch screen devices are more accessible and the 21st century skills that some of our participants and clients have are more accessible to them through the touch screen. Um, we have had lots of questions about um, the slow loading, um, especially with test prompts that include graphics. Um, we can assure you that is not our test application. Um, that is not the e-test application. It does have to do with internet bandwidth. So um, that test run that we recommend in the go live checklist is really important to make sure that you check your bandwidth um, and make sure that you have the system requirements that you need based on that going live checklist. If you don't know what the going live checklist, one of my partners uh, and team members will post the going live checklist link in the chat box for you. Um, currently in development, um, we are streamlining the process to share client data from one agency to another. Um, Martha Perez is with us today, and um, we are going to share with you a few ways that you can register students and as well as share client data uh, from agency, um, agency to agency. Um, this is fairly significant um, uh, question that we're receiving, and our tech support team is happy to help walk you through that process. Um, we have developed a help document as well. Um, that will be being published shortly. Um, we have also some, there's some expanded functionality um, um, for uh, separate funding sources and to be able to generate reports. And again, we're putting a help doc together. We're receiving lots of questions about that. Um, so we can share that help document with you about how to um, separate the funding sources for special programs in your top pro software. All right, today we are going to focus on the last steps of going live, uh, the going live checklist. Many of you have been calling in to ask about these steps. How do you do this? How do you connect? How do you add sites? Or how do you conduct a trial run? Um, what is the test difference between a testing station and testing session? So we're going to review um, some of that today as well. Um, please feel free to um, share your experience in the chat box here. Um, to implement eTest and TOPS Pro with fidelity, it's important to remember that there are two applications. The eTest is where test takers take their test. You can also register students from the eTest application. There is a management link that the proctor and coordinator, if the coordinator also functions as a proctor, needs to manage the testing sessions through. And then there is also a link to install and for users to take a test. In addition, you log on to the top pro software, which is called the TE Client. Martha is going to show us today how to install shortcuts to your testing stations and your devices so that you can easily access these without having to load them every time. So in step seven, you're adding users. This is a common question that we get. Um, you do it the first time, but now you may have a staff member who may be being added to your account, or maybe you need to change a password. Um, you need to change login credentials. Someone gets married on your staff and you want, they want to change their name or their email changes. So 
one of the things that we want to share with you is how you add users. Um, all users who interface with eTest and TOPS Pro must be added and have the proper training. Um, and that has been reviewed with you during your going live process. If you have any questions about training, you can you can contact go live at COPPIS.org to find out more about user roles and how you should assign uh, those user roles. And Martha is going to be demonstrating this as well today. One thing that's important about eTest is that you may only grant a coordinator or a proctor uh, permission or access once their certification has been verified by COSIS. Um, staff are not allowed to train other staff. Uh, proctor and coordinator certifications are required to use TOPS Pro and eTest um, to implement with Fidelity. So to add users, you'll have this screen. We also have a help document that has this specific information in it. Many of you have done this already. Some of you are in the process of adding new users. You simply open TE, it will open with a blank screen, and you may think, oh no, the screen is gray. There is a blank screen um, when you first open the TE client, but the menu bar across the top is where you click organization and select your users. And you'll click new at the top list, left and add your new users. Martha will be demonstrating this later. A couple of important things to note here. To implement TOPS Pro um, and eTest with Fidelity, COSIS has added pre-configured TE access groups when setting up a new online account. So it is important that only data managers edit, rename, duplicate, or delete these groups and add new groups. Um, it's also important when you're assigning TE access groups, um, you can define user rights and access. Um, TE uh, data access can be restricted to read only if you want teachers um, of, to be able to read access and, and access student information. And of course, there is no limit to the number of users. Great, thank you, Angel. I see that you said you adding the shortcut to opening screen is very helpful. And what role can add users? That's a great question. Um, let's see, do you have practice tests or students that can take before they come to take the main test? Okay, so we'll answer these questions in just a little bit about the role um, to add users as well as adding shortcuts. Um, and if one of my team members can add the link to the information about the roles and who gets to add users, that's great. And also practice tests, we'll show you the e-test sampler in just a minute. All right, great question. Um, adding users. So here's the question that you asked. Great, I'll um, send you that gift card later. This shows who has access and what access groups. Great question, we're right in line. The TE data manager has full access to TE and administration of TE. Um, the TE um, basic, you, in TE basic, you can't um, view, uh, you can only view records. Um, the TE teacher uh, can view their own classes. You can generate reports from TE as a data manager, as an administrator, um, and if you ha are a coordinator as well. Um, you can grant access to eTest um, as a data manager, but no other role, coordinator or program ma manager, can grant access to eTest. And who has access to eTest? Uh, the data manager assigns access and gives those privileges to your uh, to your staff. And I see we have another question. Yes, thank you, Janice, for posting the goals practice exam. And Martha, thank you for posting that link for um, the steps to adding users. Love our team. Shout out to our team. 
Next, uh, registering testing stations. So registering your testing stations enables that web secure server to deliver your e-tests on your local machine. So we've had a lot of questions in at tech support about registering stations. Um, this is a one-time event. You only need to register stations once. We highly recommend that you follow the Go Live checklist and follow the process and procedure for regi registering your testing stations. These are actually your machines or devices. And that once is that is done, you do not have to do that again unless, of course, you receive new devices or you purchase new equipment. And registering stations requires two certified e-test users. One person will register the station and the other certified e-test user, that's a proctor or coordinator or data manager, will then verify the uh, registering of the station. The first user will initiate that registration, second confirm. Doesn't have to be at the same time. Oh, I guess I will show you this screen. Through the station registration uh, is what you will see when you are adding your lab and stations. One note uh, tech tip, we recommend with your stations that you use both some sort of alpha and numeric station registration uh, coding so that you keep that in an Excel spreadsheet um, as an, uh, the administrator or the data manager of your testing stations so that you can easily make notes about which stations look for trends as well. Um, some of our, our uh, experienced users are tracking their stations on an Excel spreadsheet and then making notes if there are test interruptions. They're making notes if users are having trouble logging on um, and identifying then if that station is actually causing a technological problem. So quick test tip uh, to track your testing stations in an Excel spreadsheet and troubleshooting um, the technology uh, periodically looking at the trends to see if you have a particular station that is squarely on you and you need to um, potentially have your IT folks look at that testing station. As far as the reviewing of testing sessions in e-test, this is the e-test software. Um, this is what your screen will look like and you will see this in just a few moments. Um, Martha will be showing us how you can sort the templates based on test uh, on your test type uh, or the clients that you serve. Just a note on language as you are implementing and as you are working as a staff determining how you will and are going to be using e-test, it's important to clarify that a template identifies what type of program. That's if you're ABE, ASC, ESL, and so forth. The modalities are what tests you are going to deliver. Modalities refer to reading, math, listening, et cetera. Options on how to deliver the test tab as you are editing in e-test sessions. Um, registration, that's who you are going to test. Martha will be showing you these tabs and their functionality and some tech tips in just a few minutes. The information that you want to collect is the data and then your screen displays. And then of course, as the term admin refers to the person who is managing the session, the testing session. So the templates will deliver the test um, from, for ABE, reading goals and math goals, and ESL, ELL, the beginning literacy reading, life and work reading, and life and work listening. Important note here, you must pre and post test. If you are using listening um, and uh, let's say you're an ESL program, then you're using those testing, those test templates and you pre and post in the same series. You cannot mix and match uh, the test forms or the test series. So the test sessions, uh, a quick tech tip, Martha's going to show you today how to filter for the template name. 
Just a quick note about the locator and pretest. This is on intake, your intake testing session. It delivers a short locator and the appropriate pretest based on your students' responses. The progress test um, is your in, in your post testing. It delivers that appropriate next defined test based on your students' pretest scores. And just a reminder that to implement with fidelity, um, CASAS recommends that our research shows that showing progress with a post test, post -toast, post test requires uh, 70 to 100 instructional hours or a minimum of 40 hours, depending on what your program requirements are. But you won't be seeing that progress in the post test um, if you've only been working for 20 hours with your students, usually. Um, just in reviewing the testing sessions, we're getting a lot of questions about when to retest and which test sessions to retest. Uh, same day only delivers the appropriate retest to the students um, in the actual application. Um, students who are retesting on the same day, that happens automatically. Those who are not on the same day I will deliver an appropriate retest to the students who tested outside their accurate range, either too low or too high, um, when they took uh, whatever test form that they took before. Um, see some questions in the chat box. When using e-tests and post-testing, sometimes the testing will deliver a higher level assessment and the student scores within mm -hmm, asterisk out of range too low. It then delivers the lower level assessment, but uses the same form as the pretest. We cannot post test on the same form. Great, Carla, wonderful. Next we have, thank you to my team members who are answering the questions in the tech, tech, chat box. Next we have just a quick reminder that one certified proctor per 20 to 25 students is required per lab. This is an important note. Um, some programs have been calling in and asking if they can test more than 25. It is not a best practice, and the proctor does need to be physically present for the testing session. Um, we do have some software uh, that is available, and some people have been calling in about using software to monitor their testing station because of limited staff. Um, that is not the cost of recommendation, but we also understand um, that some sites have limitations with numbers of staff and who's able to be present. But CASAS, the CASAS implementation with Fidelity requires one certified proctor per 20, 25 students physically located in the learning lab. Uh, the testing station, um, Martha is going to show you um, sorry, testing sessions, um, how to sit, start and stop testing sessions, um, and show you what is ready to use. And this is a fully automated system. It's important to note on the retest session, and thank you for posting that, that comment in the chat box, a below accurate range is represented by a star and retesting is required. So once you have pretested, you may find that there's a conservative estimate and a diamond score. Um, CASAS requires retesting for the pretests um, that show that diamond and are recommended before the next term of enrollment. Check the chat box here. Okay. Yes, you will have. Um, you will have a link to the video and the PowerPoint. Yes, Martha is going to be covering this. We want you to have it in the PowerPoint so you yourself can also follow along with these tech tips. We'll also be covering the registering of students through e-test. You can export or import data. You can also manually enter through TOPS Pro. That being said, um, most of you are aware of the differences between the basic online invitation and enhanced implementation of TOPS Pro. So that will be available to you uh, when we send this PowerPoint to you if you need clarification on some of those questions that are coming in. Uh, the goals 
uh, series reports and content standards. We're really excited. Um, you'll see the new personal score report. You will also see the test score overview report that is available in TE Enhanced and the CCR reports with the individual skills profile now show the CCR alignment. That being said, I'd like to um, just remind you all that if you have questions about eTest and TOPS Pro, we have online training documents and support docs with a link provided here. And Martha Perez from our tech support team is going to take over our presentation now and walk you through some of the functionality that is available to you in this PowerPoint. Martha, I'm going to stop sharing and check the chat box while you get set. Thank you very much, Christine, and hello, everybody. Thank you for sh joining us. Right now, I am sharing this screen. I hope everybody is looking at my Chrome web browser. This is the etestonline.org website. I am currently using the Rolling Hills database. So hope everybody can see my screen. Can you confirm that, Christine? You yes, I can simulation. see your screen. Excellent. So everybody will have a different Depending on the state you are in, you will have a different URL when you are going to use your live account. etestonline.org is usually the main domain. Uh, Rolling Hills is for our training website. And you may have ca.etestonline.org or etestonline.org slash Washington. Like I said, it really depends on the state you are in. Generally speaking, you will use the etestsonline.org. You will receive your login credentials that are appropriate for your individual agency. You will receive a unique agency ID number as well as an login information such as a username and a password. I will show up a little bit later um, on how to reset passwords, and do other functionalities with user accounts. Right now, I would like to show everybody how to sign in and generally run a t administer a test using the Rolling Hills database. So we have documentation on our website on instructions on how to log in to the simulation server, which we will point you at the end of the training. And right now, I've, I will just assume I am a proctor and I would like to administer a test. So I would go to the URL using any web browser, modern web browser, you can use Google Chrome, Microsoft Edge, Firefox, whichever you prefer, and just go to the same URL, etestonline.org. In this case, I am using the Rolling Hills, so I need to type in Rolling Hills slash HTML5, and I will just simply click this sign in button on your top right hand corner. This URL changes to an ad, it adds management slash login because we are in the application management login page. So then I will enter my login credentials 4908. I am going to log in as as a coordinator right now. Coordinator and you can use any number between one and 50 and the word coordinator all lowercase would be your password. Once you have typed in your information, you would log in. And by signing in as a coordinator, I will have the ability to create, update, and delete testing sessions. And the edit button will be available for you if you have coordinator rights. This is very important to stand out because if you will grant access to your users only as proctors, they will not have this edit button available in their login profile because they don't have coordinator rights and you can limit that as administrators you can limit that because once you grant that access to all of your users you may end up with unstandardized testing sessions so that is something that we really encourage to keep your your testing sessions standardized upon your implementation for e-tests online you will 
be able to limit the level of access. I think we have a question. For some reason, you cannot get the video, only the audio, which you cannot shut off if I can see the video. Okay, we, we are actually taping this. Uh, you can troubleshoot by uh, logging off of the training and logging back in, Glenda, but we are recording this presentation. So the edit button, like I said before, it is presented to only those who have coordinator rights and that have completed the coordinator certification training as well as for data managers. So in order to see what the modalities are, we can click on this edit button. But before, I'd like to point out, you have this navigator on your left-hand side. You have testing sessions, which are created off of the testing session templates. So I'm going to walk you over here to the testing session templates, and you may see the various different templates that we have for our Rolling Hills database. We have different columns and they are, we have headers as well, and some filters drop downs that you can click on it and select the different types of templates that we have. And you can simply click back on the Xbox to release that filter. And then you can also see the amount of testing sessions that are using this particular template for ABE or for either these templates that we have available. I will also click on this edit button just to show you that this is the core, the core of your testing session. We, on the template, testing session template, we establish which modalities we want to use, reading and math in the case of the ABE ASC program, as this are, these are the testing series approved by the NRS. So once you establish the testing sessions, templates and select your modalities, you will be able to create testing sessions off of this template. I will quickly go through the options. And just to let you know and, and give you a little be, bit of peace of mind, CASAs will create standardized testing sessions for you. So you don't really need to worry about having all these little options in place as CASAs recommends because we can provide you with standardized testing session templates. So as I am going through the different tabs, these are the recommended settings. And upon testing a student on an individual testing session, they will get a default program enrollment into the program that corresponds to the session that they are testing on. If they will be testing on an ABE session, they will receive a basic skills or ABE program enrollment to their test start date. That will enroll them in a program immediately. And then I will continue to go through and really quickly because of our time constraints here um, through the data tab on the testing session template in the data tab, you will establish what data collection screens you would like to collect from your students. If you are reporting federal data, we do recommend that you can collect as much demographic information as possible. So that way you can report your your data as a complete data set for all your students. In order to, you have two columns here. So in order to select your, your data collection screens, we're currently under the selected column. We have only three different data collection screens. We have the student info, which requires a student ID number, a first and a last name. Now, you may be thinking, how do I assign a student ID? Maybe if you don't have a, a third party, an attendance system, any type of attendance systems that there are in the market, if you don't have that available, we can suggest creating a spreadsheet, for instance, that you can use on the side to start entering all your student IDs as in a, in a in a sorting matter. If you do have uh, one, like 001, 002, 003, and that way you will continue to build on, on those numbers and enter as, as the students come along into your program. And that way you can track your, your student's ID. 
uh, barriers to employment and attainable goals are some of the data collection screens that you can also add gender. And to add those data collection screens, you would need to press them on to the left-hand side under the selected column. In this case, we can quickly double click on the birth date or on zip code, and that way we will add more data collection screens to your, to your students screen at the time of testing. So for now, I will demonstrate with, on, and with just these data collection screens. The layout tab has other um, standard recommended settings, which we don't need to update, or the admin tab as well. So I will simply click the save by adding those other data collection screens. Uh, there's another question about um, using laces. And yes, if you have a different, um, a different data collection system, you don't need then to collect them through ETS online unless you would like to. So once we have established our templates, like in this case, uh, CASAs will provide those to you. Now we know what is exactly going to be collected. So I will go back to our testing sessions. And what I did is I edited the ABE ASC template at the North Campus. Once we edit this template and we updated, all the testing sessions that are created off of that template will be automatically updated. So it is very important to keep in mind which data collection screens or which changes you're going to be doing on the testing session templates. So I will go back to testing sessions now and I see our list of testing sessions, but these are too many records. You can see a counter on your top right hand corner inside this this parentheses a 1339 folks don't get don't don't this this is an overwhelming number of of what of testing sessions but remember we are using the rolling hills database and for training purposes we have created uh, many test sessions as a package like a family series of test sessions per lab per site so if you have different labs at your site or if you have different sites we recommend to have exclusively a package or um, family test sessions per lab per site in this case i am going to use these filter buttons or drop down boxes here to select the north campus as you can see that number already reduced the amount of testing sessions and now if i were to filter for my templates and i would like to find abe slash asc sessions i can also filter by using this drop down box and let's say we have several labs at our site at the north campus what i'm going to do is to filter for my individual lab in this case i can type or i can select from the drop down arrow i can just type this the, the word lab colon two oh, i'm sorry colon zero and then hit my enter button on my keyboard. That way it will filter for my particular list of testing sessions that we normally reproduce or create for you at your agency. And as you can see, we are now better off here with only eight testing sessions. If you, for any reason, would like to come back to see this lister only, we have this button available here called Save Table Filters. That way it will remind it will save these table filters that I have previously established. So in case I go back to testing session templates for whatever reason, and then I come back to testing sessions, instead of seeing the, the long list of testing sessions, I will only see my pre-selected eight records, which I can also remove by unchecking this save table filters and removing my table filters here. Okay, I'm gonna leave them on and also, indicate or edit this intake pretest session. So these are your list of testing sessions, which are have different applications. We have an appraisal form, which what we'll do is we'll give the students only an appraisal test. Many agencies, especially the workforce development agencies, they like to use appraisal forms maybe just to diagnose or figure out, find out which level the student is at. 
but some agencies do not track gains. We don't know. There's different agencies with individ with different needs. So the the appraisal form, I will go ahead and show you really quick. It only delivers the forms 900 R and M, which are the appraisal forms for reading and math goals. If I go back to my list of testing sessions, I will go back to the list and show you that this is the only form that will be applied by using the appraisal form. We also have the locator and that is embedded in the intake pretest session. The locator is a shorter version of the appraisal. The, the appraisal, because it's a longer assessment, it does consume an additional web test unit. So it's for you to have in mind and the, the locator does not consume an additional web test unit. It is included in the price of the web test unit that you use for the pretest. So if you would like to use this, we can recommend the locator as well. It is up to you to decide which, which method you would like to use. Okay, so going back to the list of testing sessions, I have the same list of sessions here. And now the, the intake pre test is for you to welcome new students into the program. It will allow adding those new records at the time of testing. The progress post test will allow, will disallow new student records to avoid student duplications and administer the next appropriate test from level form level automatically when the student enters the same ID as recorded in the online account. The retest session, or this is a registration with practice, which will only deliver practice tests and will allow students to get registered at the same time by providing their demographic information. And those would be requested by you using the testing session templates. The retest scores outside accurate range, I believe Christine already went through these. Uh, they can be used for retesting your students whenever they score outside of the accurate range and we have the returning students pretest as well for those students who have been absent from instruction for more than 90 days. Now I am going to switch off my roles here because I logged in as a coordinator and coordinator does not have the ability to start a session. So I will simply click the logout link and I will now log in. Remember folks we are using the Rolling Hills simulation server so I will switch off my role as a proctor and the word proctor or lowercase would be our password. I will log in as a proctor to quickly demonstrate how to deliver a test now that you are a proctor. And see folks, this changed a little bit. Now we don't have the edit button towards my left hand side. That means that I don't have editing abilities, which are reserved only for coordinators. So again, I can do my same filters going through the different sites, and I'm going to use an ABE session template, an ABE session this time. I will use my lab 000, and these are not case sensitive, so you can type in lowercase, uppercase, whichever you prefer, and it will still do the same filtering. So I will save my table filters and we'll give an intake pretest. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start. So now that I'm a coordinator, what do I do? Well, you just simply click the start button. Very simple, right? You just need to acknowledge the information that you get presented on this pop-up box. And then you have a number of hours to manage your testing sessions. So you can just simply click start. And by doing that, automatically will take you to the session activity window. This is a session activity window where you actually monitor your active students. And then you see the status of the session is active. Once we have this session activity window, our last step is to add the desired stations that you're going to use. Of course, you have to previously register them. And I will go through a little exercise here in just a moment to show you how to save those shortcuts on your desktop. And that would be on your testing stations desktops. So you can save that for the students and just double click on them before testing them. So now 
the only thing we need, we need to do is click on add the stations by clicking this green button at the bottom left. I have previously registered my computer. I called it Martha's Training Computer. And then I will click on the select button. By doing that, actually, I'm gonna go ahead and add all those registered machines from some other users around the country somewhere. And I will just click on select, see if they are chiming in and probably taking a test as well. We can try that. Now, by doing this, folks, you have properly started your testing sessions and proactively added your machines into an active session. So now what is there left to do? Well, is just to physically go into any of the, to all of these computers and open up your web browser. I'm going to use another tab here and pretend that this is my Martha's training computer, which I can pretend is physically on another location. So what you do, folks, is simply go to the same URL that you are using. In this case, I am using the Rolling Hills database, which is etestsonline.org slash Rolling Hills. And then what I would do is simply click on take a test. When I click on take a test, this is going to ask me to download this casaswebtests.exe. This is an executable file that is required to run every single time that you're going to test or deliver a test to a student in a testing station. So what I'm going to do is show you folks how to save that shortcut into your desktop so you have it ready. So I would show it in folder. It really depends, the options depend on what, which browser you are using. In this case, I'm going to show in folder and my folder will show here, I have another screen that I'm going to drag this box. This is the casaswebtest.exe. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to minimize that and go to my desktop. Can everybody see my desktop? Can, can you see my desktop now? And have this downloads folder. What I'm going to do is Oh, here we go. Okay, there we go. So can you see my desktop now and my, my downloads folder? Very good, thank you. And then what I'm going to do is drag this into my desktop. And this is going to give me this little uh, icon that looks like a cute lock. So this lock is going to give me that executable file that I need. Once I started my session, you go to the testing station and activate this webtest.exe. So you can also right click and click on run as administrator or simply double click on this lock. What this is going to do, and I'm going to start a new share here, sorry about that. It, what this is going to do is that it's going to, it's going to, here we go. Can you see my screen now? It's going to turn your web browser into a secure mode. That way, the students are only focused on delivering the test, on entering their ID. So again, I'm going to uh, do a little faster pace here. Um, I'm going to just make up an ID number. Remember that we are using the Rolling Hills database. So anything that gets um, done here, it's it's. Uh, reset nightly so the next day it's it's the same fresh uh, populated database so i will simply go ahead and enter uh, some of the basic information that we are collecting folks we have a list here of six data collection screens so i will go ahead and enter by using these arrows to navigate towards the right hand side. And these were some of the data collection screens that I was uh, setting up in my template. So I will just randomly select different uh, barriers to employment, which were some of the required ones and move along through the different uh, goals. And I will just simply, I don't know, just select any given goals randomly and gender and these are the data collection screens that were 
selected. Remember folks, you can limit or expand the amount of data collection screens that you have that you would like to collect. So I will just randomly enter any zip code and then go to the last page. The last page is a review page where you can also update or change the information that you have previously entered. Well, the students will have that available. Once they're done, they can just simply click the save button. And this folks will take them immediately to their test menu. You have the reading and the math locator buttons, which will be available. If you are going to be testing your students on a, just one modality, let's say you just want to uh, test them on reading, we can also edit your testing session templates to only show the reading sessions and that nothing else, no math or vice versa. Okay, we can do that all from modifying the testing session templates or creating new templates with new modalities. So again, I'm going to simply click on the reading button. This gives you the instructions on how to proceed with testing. I will quickly go through these, these options as the display will the content of this training because of security purposes are suppressed. So I will just simply try to respond to some of uh, the questions that we have here. And again, these are just practice items. These are, I'm sorry, these are just uh, using the Rolling Hills database. So I will simply go through some of these responses here and I know that nothing it's displaying right now, but what I will do is just enter any random responses and show you what possibilities I have as a student to save these answers. All these answers will be recorded in Topspro Enterprise as soon as the student finishes the test. All right, and you can also use so it looks like I already went through the locator and by applying those responses I got placed on a 903 R form and it gives me also the directions for this form so I will proceed you can also folks use the the key the key um, letters on your keyboard you can use letters a b or c in in your keyboard in order for you to enter responses so right now i am using the mouse to begin the test but i am going to just apply one response with my mouse and then i will leave it on to apply responses with my keyboard i can use the letter b on my keyboard and then use my enter button in order to move along to the next available question we have questions right here number three so i am going to use the c button or the c key or the d and then enter so that way folks you can also tell your students whoever doesn't feel comfortable using the mouse that they can use the keyboard as well and apply all their responses of course we're not showing right now any items but i would like to also use uh, the e-test sampler which is available on our website so you can see some of the items and the colorful displays that we have for the reading and math goals all right, so I, again, I will simply uh, streamline through this assessment. And then I get to this, to this part where I didn't apply a response, but I went through the next available screen. So it, it actually gives you a, a prompt if you would like to skip a question. So in this case, I'm going to say yes and continue to quickly apply responses to the rest of my questions. Right now I'm going through question 26 and out of 40 questions. Now I'm going to simply do this really quick and I'm going to skip another question. So I can show you at the end of this test, it gives you a review page. This review page will allow you to go back to previous questions that you did not apply any responses and then the students can, can finish their tests appropriately. As you can see folks, you have this review page at the end of the test and I can see exactly which testing, which questions I didn't apply any response. So I can simply click by going to this 
button and applying my response. And then I have a, a display here to go through the next available question or go back to the review. In this case, I would like to go back to the review so I can apply my last response that I didn't enter. Of course, you would like to always encourage your students to do their best as they can and then go back to my review page. Not until I click on this end test button, it will save my test and record all my answers. Nothing else that I will be able to change now once I click on the end test button. Once I click on the end test button, it automatically gives me a personal score report. It gives me the um, modality, the test form I tested on and what level I scored, as well as the date, the scale score and the NRS level. It also gives me a description about my level one that I am at and this is what I can simply do. Now this print button, you can enable it or disable it. If you have stations uh, hooked up to computers on your lab, you can also allow this print button by default, I believe is allowed, but you, if you don't want to allow that and you can disable it on your settings from your testing session templates. Now I will simply exit by clicking the next arrow. And now, as you can see, once I took the reading assessment, I will not see that reading button again. I will only have the math form and I can, at this point, because of the time uh, issue, I'm going to log out of my application. Once I log out, the station is ready and available for another student to enter their ID number so they can continue testing. All right. Um, once they have finished their tests, you always want to um, exit the application so you can return it to a secure mode. In this case, I'm going to start a new share on my screen here. Um, one moment. What I'm going to show you now, folks, is to how to quickly download the Tops Pro Enterprise software. That way, uh, can you see my screen? Uh, okay, here. So this is the etasonline.org. And in order to install and download Tops Pro Enterprise, we will click on this install TE client on my top left corner, again, from the same URL, etasonline.org. Once we click on install TE client, this will allow us to open, install and open. And what it's doing at this time is that it is actually opening up, installing the program, opening up the Tops Pro Enterprise and saving a desktop shortcut so you can be easier, easier access. I am going to log in really, really quick as an administrator, folks, so we can demonstrate you the, rec the results and be able to run a report off of the test that I took previously. As this takes a few seconds here to log in, I can go to records, students, demographics. So when we tested our student, at that same time, this program recorded um, record for that student. Martha, this is Christine. We now see the e-test application, but we don't see the TE client application yet. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry about that. Um, That's okay. Not a problem. Let me see here. Can you see my screen now? Yes, we can. Shout okay. out to Martha okay. Perez, everybody. Sorry, folks. Um, um, I know we... Great. I know we are exceeding on our time, but I folks, I would like to demonstrate this because this is really important. Once you are in the data manager position, this is what you're going to be needing to do. So I, this is the information that I uh, recorded earlier by using my name and uh, taking a test. So I will go to records, students, demographics in order to see this information. The records, so as you can see, there's different menus on the top area, top left corner. And the organization menu is pertaining to agency information. The records menu is pertaining to student information and data. So I always suggest to go to records and then students demographics. And once we get to that demographics lister, you'll see the entire list of data, uh, 
student population that you have. There's counter, there's a counter on the top area, or you can find more buttons on the top. And there is actually a more button, which includes more information or more buttons and functionalities. This is a web, um, this is a program that you can practice also using the database, the Rolling Hills database, and you have multiple filter buttons inside of each of the column headers. So in this case, I can filter for my last name. In this case, I'm going to type in last name and this will bring me all possible matches. So if I would like to do a uh, sort, I would see, I, would, I can use my control button on my keyboard and then click on the first name. That way it will alphabetize every possible matches that include my last name. And then it will alphabetize every possible name that matches with the last name. In this case, I can find myself in here and just double click on this record to open up the student demographic information. Once you open it up, you have this navigator on your left hand side and we can just click quickly go through and see what other records were created off of taking a test record, a test session. It looks like it created an in-program years record. It does create a student record as well. And in this case, I don't think we added a class enrollment, but you could also, if you have the enhanced feature, you could also set up a class information or class number into your testing sessions. So you can at the same time enroll your students in a class if that is available for you. Uh, the no class records as hours of attendance have not been recorded through e-tests. And then you also see a program enrollment. In this case, I took an ABE session and this is my ABE program enrollment. Um, um, I'm going to go quickly to the tests menu here and you can see folks that I took the 104R and right after the 104R I took the 103R. We can simply double click on any of these assessments to also verify the responses. You can also do that, track your students' responses as well and you can use these um, buttons here to go back and forth to the different test records. Now I'm going to quickly uh, run a report by using this reports menu and I'm going to click on test results. I would like to generate the individual skills profile report and this way I'm going to wrap it up. Um, I know because of time constraint, we didn't have enough time to touch on users. I'm going to quickly do that right after we run the report. I will click on I'm going to go to the my default here and click on in program years. So I will filter for my student ID. Once I have typed my student ID, only my name should pop up and I will simply click on the generate button. And this will give us the individual skills profile report for on the test that I took earlier. And you can also provide this to the instructor. As you can see, you have uh, the number of items, the test, and there is another feature inside the report. I'm going to back to the report into the general settings right here called show grade level equivalent. This is very uh, unique setting. I will regenerate my report because this will give you the grade level equivalency that the student is at. And you have other functionalities here to fit page, to fit the whole entire report in one page or in two pages if there's multiple reports to, to send out. Uh, you can export these reports by clicking the export button and this will choose a place in your computer to export them and save them as either PDFs or Excel spreadsheets. Um, if you have too many uh, tabs or information here folks we can just click on the pages button and click on close all pages that way it will close down everything and I can start fresh by going through the organization menu and clicking on this users list. I normally like to direct our, our users to go to organization agencies where you will see very similar menu as this one. So I will direct you to the organization agency. You will see your agency's name here and quickly double click on it. Once you double click on it to open up the record, you have this navigator on your left. Again, you will see the users list here. And this is where you actually provide access to your users into your Topspro Enterprise 
or e-tests online. It is up to you whether to determine if the person or the, the user or your coworker has completed the proctor certification trainings, you can give them access as proctors. And if they also will be needing to log into the Topspro Enterprise environment or the data reporting side of the application, you can also enable their access to a limited access to only list and view records as well as to generate reports. So we have a wealth of documentation on our website with instructions on how to provide access to your users. I am going to quickly create a seldom user account here by using this new user button. Once it opens up, into the edit mode, I can simply add a new user. In this case, I can I use my email address as um, an example. And I can you can simply type in something really simple as like the first name lowercase for the user. Once you save this information, the, the user, once they log in for the very first time, they will be prompted to reset their password. I'm sorry, folks, I'm just going to take it one more minute here and show you how to grant access. You have different levels of access. There's different access groups that start with ET. These will grant access to e-tests online at the system level. If you are the data manager, you will be enabled to do this, to grant access to e-tests as a proctor and as a coordinator by simply clicking this add button and also confirming this information. You will acknowledge this and also Besides the ETS coordinator slash proctor, I will also like to provide my user to TE admin access basic so they can have the basic access as an admin to the database. Again, we can add any of the TE basic access as well. And well, for some reason, this application would not want me to add a user into Topspro Enterprise but I will simply fill in the basic fields, which is the first, last name, and email address. Once I have these fields organized, I will click on the Save button. And now this user has access to the Rolling Hills database. I will show you how that user has access now to the e-tests online. I will click Sign In. I will go to enter my login credentials and type in the password that you provided to your user. I will click login and you should get this message. According to the application settings, you are required to change your password to grant to be granted access. Once you are granted at once you reset your password, and then you have some specifications. to meet, as with any regular website, you have some alphanumeric character um, to meet, and then you have successfully changed your password. Once you have successfully changed your password, now you are ready to start and stop testing sessions to be performing as proctors, as coordinators, and also to register computers at your agency. This is very important, folks. You would need to reset your password first by signing in before attempting to register computers. I am so sorry that I've taken so much of your time. So uh, please, Christine, continue. Yeah, no, Martha, this has been helpful. Um, we didn't see your last screen um, for how you did that. And that's not a problem because we do have help docs, help docs available. Um, we posted several times in the chat box multiple links. And um, we really appreciate your time today. We recognize that we've run over about 15 minutes, but it's cost us and we have lots of information we want to share. <laughs> so thank you. I want to shout out my team members. Thank you so much for um, for uh, monitoring the chat box and providing a wealth of knowledge. Um, this will be recorded, as we said, this PowerPoint, as well as the recording, um, will be posted on our landing page under what's new and the news and updates webinar links. 
um, our guru, Berenice Weber, who is our webmaster, has posted that link for us. We hope that this was helpful. A lot of information we understand, but we wanted to get this information to you. We've been receiving multiple calls. I want to thank you again for being here today. Um, I'm going to share just the final screen so that you can see our tech support screen. If you can, um, just let me know that you can see that last page. Martha, can you see my screen? Uh, no, not um, right now. Okay. okay, I'm trying to share. Mm -hmm. um, if, if you can stop sharing and then I can yes, take over. I, I, stopped. I stopped my sharing. Perfect. And um, hopefully you can there see my screen. Yes. Just to make sure that you have the information. Thank you so, so much for joining us. We had, I believe, 286 participants today. Your questions are coming in fast and furious, and we are doing our best to respond to them. If you cannot find the information in the online training and help support docs, um, you will have that link here in the PowerPoint that we post for you. The, there were lots of questions about the report. We've in, anticipated that you would be asking those questions, and I've already included those uh, reports and some of the information about those reports and how to find them in this PowerPoint. Yay us for anticipating those questions. You'll see these screens here to help you navigate through uh, TE. And last but not least, we want to thank you. Um, there are some resources. When you receive this PowerPoint, these will be links for you to link to the resources on our website. Thank you so much for attending. Join us at Summer Institute. We love your participation and really appreciated those of you sharing your expertise in the chat box. Thanks to our team members and have a great uh, afternoon and evening. We will see you next month. Take good care. Um, Martha and I will be staying online for about uh, 10 or 15 minutes to answer any questions up till 1230. If you have questions in the chat box, please feel free to post them. Um, we, I'll stay on until 1230 to answer any questions and send you links that you may need. Yes, thank you. Thanks everybody. so much, everybody. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm. Next month's date, Angel, um, I'll send that to you. We will post that um, also um, on uh, the website, okay? Not a problem.